Hello students, our today's chapter is carbonyl compounds that is aldehyde and ketones. Main part is that preparation and chemical reactions. Here I am giving you a quick idea about the IUPAC nomenclature. Although you have done these examples in detail in separate topic which is IUPAC nomenclature or nomenclature example in which all the functional groups are covered one by one. right? So here a quick revision for you that for aldehydes prefix is formyl. Most commonly we use formyl and oxo can also be used depending on depending on when its carbon is counted then it becomes oxo. So that's why I'm saying if generally we say formyl is the prefix of aldehyde and if the carbon of aldehyde is counted then we use the term oxo that's why it all depends how the four options are framed right suffix al that means while naming it becomes alkanal this is used when carbon of aldehyde group is counted then we use suffix alkanal and if in case of rings where it is attached to ring structure then its name is carb aldehyde when we name it then we mention the name as cyclo alkane that means cyclopentane cyclohexane carb aldehyde so this these are the two suffixes first example in this case there are how many carbons 1 2 3 it is carbon containing functional group and its carbon is counted here that's why no need to mention its number in naming so at first carbon this is second third at second carbon alkyl group methyl 2 methyl propane null main chain contains total three carbons and which functional group aldehyde that means al it is open chain or acyclic that's why its first suffix is used in second there are two functional groups cho and carboxylic between these two seniority order of carboxylic is high that is why numbering will start from which carbon carboxylic carbon 1 2 3 4 5 now here two cases may arise first is general case at fifth position substituent with substituent aldehyde name will be 5 formyl pentanoic acid or if we count its carbon then second type of suffix or uh, prefix is used which is oxo so other name depending on the option 6 oxo 6 oxo cho hexane oic acid third example where we have three functional uh, three functional groups which are same that is aldehyde in that case also we will use second type of suffix and it becomes one two three parent chain one two three at first position cho second position cho third position cho propane one two three tri carb aldehyde now here if you take any of them in numbering suppose one two three four five then one CHO has to be a substituent. That is why in this case when there we have three or more times, three times functional group that is same, then you always try to use a second type of suffix in which we do not count their carbon in parent chain. Side the other chain becomes parent chain and they are directly connected to the parent chain. That's why carb aldehyde. So it all depends that if there's two functional groups CHO CHO then numbering will be done but if there are three or more than three then we always try to use second type of suffix which is carbaldehyde that means their carbon will not get the numbering. Then uh, important example benzaldehyde now here it is benzene carbaldehyde and I, common name benzaldehyde and that common name is also IUPAC accepted. Now next is the nomenclature for aldehyde sorry for ketones. Now in ketones prefix is oxo or keto and suffix is only one which is own when we name it it becomes alkanone. For example in first one there is double bond and C double bond O. Numbering will start from there which gives minimum number 2 functional group and then we go for multiple bond. If we start from the right side multiple bond will get third number and functional group will get second number. 
if you start from left side you will get more number for ketone that's why which is the preferred one from the right side one then two for c double bond o and third for ene and name will be pent 1 2 3 4 5 pent 3 in e is dropped because it is followed by own that's why here it is pent 3 in 2 own second example two functional groups one is suffix other becomes prefix which is prefix here ketone is prefix and aldehyde is suffix therefore numbering will be one from the right side, two, three, four. At third position, prefix three, oxo. Then total carbons, four, butane, al. Now here we need, we do not mention any numbering for aldehyde. But in the last example, for ketone, we should mention its number. Why? Because in ketone, we know it is in between the carbon chain. That is why always mention its number. If there is no doubt, then you can skip the numbering. Otherwise, for ketone, which lies in between the carbon chain, we always mention the numbering. Whereas for aldehyde, there is no need to mention because when it is a suffix, it will get carbon number 1 in the open chain structure. Third, there is C double bond O alcohol and one substituent. Now between these two, carbonyl is suffix, then it becomes a prefix. Now we give first number to C double bond O. Then now both are prefixes. Now you cannot consider that OH is senior to Br. Why? Because C double bond O is suffix. Remaining all groups becomes prefix. Therefore, numbering will be so that prefix will get less number after the numbering from the C double bond O carbon. That means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now 3 bromo alphabetically, then 5 hydroxy, then cyclohexane on or cyclohexane 1 on. In next example, numbering will start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At fourth position, dimethyl. Two methyl groups, 4, 4, dimethyl, pentane, 2, O. Now next is the relevant part, which is more relevant part, which is the preparation of carbonyl compounds. Now first reaction is oxidation of alcohol this reaction is already covered in alcohol topic the reactions which we have covered we will not cover here in detail i'll simply write the reagents and you can go through that video for where we have done oxidation of alcohol now reagents which we can use here pcc what are the key points of pcc it will oxidize primary alcohol to aldehyde secondary alcohol to ketone tertiary alcohol no reaction cro3 anhydrous medium same like pcc primary to aldehyde secondary to ketone tertiary no reaction even we can use collins reagent or if we use kmno4 then it will oxidize primary alcohol to carboxylic acid secondary alcohol to ketone tertiary alcohol no reaction digromate same way remember if ketone is given and vigorous oxidation is written with kmno4 then ketone will also cleave into carboxylic acid carbon chain will be reduced and we get carboxylic acid so these are the general reagents which we can use to oxidize alcohol to carbox carboxylic acid if it is primary alcohol and primary alcohol to aldehyde depending on the pcc cro3 or collins reagent and secondary alcohol to ketones next reaction is dehydrogenation of alcohol using copper heat now this reaction also in alcohol we have done copper heat primary alcohol to aldehyde secondary alcohol to ketone tertiary alcohol to sedzef alkene is formed so this is second reaction dehydrogenation of alcohol third one it is from hydrocarbons ozone lysis of alkene it is in the chemical reaction of alkene ozone lysis it is general reaction i am writing r dash cs double bond crr here first one ozone lysis and then uh, h2o second one again first step with ozone second step is uh, zinc h2o or dimethyl sulfide first one is oxidative ozone lysis and second one is reductive ozone lysis now in oxidative analysis when bond is cleaved then from left side we get carboxylic acid because in oxidative analysis aldehyde is not formed it will further gets oxidized to carboxylic acid. Then carboxylic acid from left side and ketone from right side. In reductive ozone analysis bond cleave 
here C double bond O resulting into aldehyde there C double bond O ketone. I am not writing the mechanism of ozolysis because it is a part of the alkene topic if you remember on the double bond ozone add it forms molozonite, molozonite undergoes rearrangement to give ozonide then bond cleave and we get carbonyl compound and if we have oxidative ozone lysis then we get carboxylic acid and ketone possible. Now next reaction is hydration of alkyne. This reaction if you remember is a part of the chemical reactions of alkynes and it is very important reaction because of the hydration reaction which is given in NCRT also for alkynes. Here I am writing two reactions alkyne HG2 plus if you remember it is also possible to write HGSO4 with H2SO4 or HG2 plus with H2SO4 at this temperature. Now here if you remember it follows Markovnikov addition on triple bond. Here you will get add hydrogen on the carbon which is containing alkyl group OS there. It is in all form and in all is not stable. So it will quickly tautomerize to give RCOCH3, right? Second reaction is hydroboration oxidation. Here key point is what? In star you can, uh, uh, you can write it also here. It is following Markovnikov addition. Here in hydroboration oxidation anti Markovnikov addition of H and OH on alkyne bond. The hydroboration oxidation on the carbon here OH group and on the opposite carbon anti Markovnikov addition simple point and H there it is enol. Enol is less stable it quickly tautomerized to give carbonyl. So in above case you will get ketone and here you are getting aldehyde. So these two are reactions of addition of water. Between them the more important one is uh, HG2 plus with H2SO4. Next reaction very important uh, name reaction Rosenmund reaction or Rosenmund reduction. Here we take acid halide RCOCl acid chloride with H2PDBASO4 or if Lindler's catalyst is the term mentioned still do the same reaction RCOCl with H2PD in barium sulphate. Poisoned with quinoline but that is not mentioned simple Lindler's catalyst is used then finally it goes up to RCHO. Example if benzoyl chloride is taken with H2PDBSO4 it gives PHCHO that is benzaldehyde. In this example if we take H2 palladium BSO4 COCl is going to CHO but remember triple bond undergoes partial reduction if we take Lindler's catalyst therefore this triple bond becomes alkene and if particular question is asked which alkene it is cis alkene is formed. Now next reaction is Stephens reaction or Stephens reduction. In this case we treat nitrile with SNCl2 HCl which firstly gives imine and then after hydrolysis we get aldehyde. This is important reaction just like Rosenmund reduction. Stephens reduction is also important. In Rosenmund reduction we took RCOCl. Here we are taking RCN. The reagents are important SNCl2 HCl followed by hydrolysis. Example in this case SNCl2 HCl S3O plus this indicates that it is a reaction which is Stephens reaction. Why? Because cyanide group is present. Now this reagent will not reduce double bond or triple bond only it will reduce CN group to CHO. Next reaction is very very important which is Itard reaction. Here in which category oxidation of methyl benzene, alkyl benzene or toluene with CrO2 chromyl, chromyl chloride with CS2 or we can also take CCl4. This is a standard reaction or bottom name reaction Itard. Now here it firstly forms intermediate which is chromium complex on toluene carbon CH3. This becomes CH and a complex is formed OCrCl2OH OCrCl2OH. After hydrolysis it gives benzaldehyde. That is why it is a very important reaction because of a name reaction it is Itard reaction. Next reaction is also similar to Itard. Here we took chromic oxide with acetic anhydride under this temperature condition it also forms an intermediate CHOCOCH3 OCOCH3 
after hydrolysis and heating it gives benzaldehyde so among these two more important is itard reaction but yes both are given in ncrt so you should remember that first one is itard second one is also similar to itard only difference is there we are taking cro3 with acetic anhydride and intermediate is formed this one which after hydrolysis and heating gives benzaldehyde Now next reaction is Gatterman coach synthesis or Gatterman reaction, direct NCRT reaction. Benzene with CuHCl in presence of anhydrous AlCl3 and CuCl. It gives benzaldehyde plus byproducts are formed. Now the reactions which are important and given with mechanism, we remember it by mechanism. And if they are given directly, better is remember them directly because they are directly given in NCRT also. Here you can remember it by that. CO with HCl generates electrophile which is acylium ion and it undergoes electrophilic aromatic substitution. Next reaction is from organo cadmium with acyl halides. We can prepare ketone basically by using R2CD organo cadmium compound with acyl chloride. How to prepare dialkyl cadmium? We can prepare it from Grignard reagent RMGX plus cadmium chloride it gives R2CD plus 2MgxCl now this is dialkyl cadmium it is similar to Grignard but it is less reactive as compared to Grignard now we can treat acid chloride with dialkyl cadmium Cl minus leave and out of that one R will substitute Cl we get R dash C double bond O R we can balance it and by balancing we again get two moles of ketone. For example, in this case, dimethyl cadmium with it is uh, propanoyl chloride, Cl minus leave one CH3 will substitute and that is the ketone form. Now here the important point of this reaction is if we have an option given, Grignard also given, dialkyl cadmium is also given and asked which is a better method to prepare carbonyl compound then we will go for dialkyl cadmium why because after the reaction is completing here dialkyl cadmium will not react further with carbonyl compound if Grignard reagent is present and ketone is formed Grignard reagent will further react with ketone to finally give tertiary alcohol that's why I'm saying it all depends how the four options are given Generally we use Grignard reagent to prepare carbonyl and from carbonyl to alcohol but if the question is which is preferred dialkyl cadmium is a better reagent to prepare ketone as compared to Grignard reagent because it is less reactive than Grignard reagent. Now next reaction is Grignard with nitrile RCN alkyl nitrile Grignard with RCN alkyl nitrile this is basically that Grignard R will act like a nucleophile and it will add on which carbon nitrile carbon it gets positive charge becomes electrophilic center and attacked by the nucleophile which is from Grignard R is having partial negative charge so here bond will shift that side carbon becomes positive and this will be attacking there. Now this is addition on this carbon in presence of ether solvent then it forms this type of intermediate R there N minus MgX plus after hydrolysis this bond is cleaved and we finally get ketone. It is important reaction with RCN with alkyl, uh, alkyl nitrile plus Grignard reagent we get ketone but if I take here HCN HCN that means HCR HC double bond OR we get aldehyde group to so remember any hint is given in the option that after Grignard treatment with nitrile group it is giving aldehyde that means this nitrile has to be HCN hydrogen cyanide or methane nitrile example it is ethane nitrile first step with Grignard then hydrolysis then quickly you understand that on this carbon nitrile carbon that Grignard R will attack and after hydrolysis it will give CH3C double bond OPH that means 
acetophenone is formed next reaction we can prepare uh, carbonyl compound from grignard reacting with acid derivatives like acid halide acid and hydride acid uh, ester we can also take so here simply it is what it is nucleophilic acyl substitution this cl minus will be substituted by r dash from grignard so we can take either acid halide or anhydride or ester but we cannot take acid amide with grignard because nh2 contains acidic h it gives acid base reaction so it is which reaction acid nucleophilic acyl substitution cl minus substituted by r minus example phco cl that is benzoyl chloride with grignard reagent Cle clearly it indicates that nucleophile nucleophile uh, will substitute the cl group that means cl leave and ch3 will add on the c double bond o it forms phco ch3 in this reaction i have mentioned here one equivalent why because if we have two equivalents or excess of grignard another ch3 will add there and it becomes o minus after hydrolysis it gives alcohol that is the problem that if we take excess of grignard with acid derivative it finally goes up to alcohol to, to stop the reaction or to form carbonyl compound then we use dialkyl cadmium next reaction is already very important reaction in uh, hello alkanes hello hello arenes this uh, reaction was covered friedel craft acylation this is rcucl either we can take acid anhydride here it in presence of anhydrous alcl3 this is friedel craft acylation in presence of anhydrous alcl3 and rcucl it gives which electrophile acylium ion r c double bond o and carbon is positive it is acylium ion this electrophile undergoes electrophilic substitution on the benzene ring and gives finally ketone okay so these are the some reactions of carbonyl compounds the next reaction is dry distillation of carboxylic acid this is additional reaction and you also get this reaction while solving modules from different coaching institutes also so that's why i'm adding this reaction by dry distillation of carboxylic acid we can also prepare carbonyl compounds reaction is carboxylic acid we take two moles with calcium hydroxide heating finally we get ketone and by products are there cacu3 is formed now here how to remember we take two moles of carboxylic they react with calcium hydroxide it forms this type of uh, structure and then removing CaCO3 after removal of CaCO3 on heating CaCO3 removed and remember this R will combine with carbon why because you have already cleaved that bond R C double bond O R are you getting that is the way to write the product for example formic acid CaOH twice it, it is dry distillation of acid we combine HC double bond O with another hydrogen hc double bond oh how to write it you again mention their h here also h cacu3 removed hc double bond oh second example it is oxalic malonic succinic acid it is succinic acid then calcium hydroxide heat which is dry distillation of carboxylic acid to give ketone or carbonyl compound so here within the molecule this type of structure is formed calcium like here this is the intermediate already written here now after this cacu3 removed and you get finally a three membered ring carbonyl group that is cacu3 removed and this combines with this carbon one two three next example alkene first is ozonolysis o3 h2 that means it is oxidative ozonolysis right i am writing combiningly you can do in rough notebook by step by step first is oxidative ozonolysis second is dry distillation of carboxylic acid because after this cleavage after first step we get dicarboxylic acid and then on doing dry distillation uh, this type of intermediate formed after heating we get cyclobutane on so for these examples you can simultaneously try in your rough notebook okay